Hello, and welcome to this video where we will introduce our first statistical test, the z-test. So we've been looking at the relationship between the period of a pendulum, uh, the length of the pendulum, the gravitational field, and the p of this power law. Now, when I did this experiment, I measured with some dummy data a power of 0.3 plus or minus 0.23. And hopefully you do a little bit better. We know that the true value here is 0.5. And we can see this just by thinking about the units of L and the units of G and sort of putting them together. The only possible answer that works with the units is P equals 0.5. So the question we have is, is my result consistent? with that true value. Now, it looks like it is, you know, I've, I've got 0.3 plus or minus 0.23. So my uncertainty definitely encapsulates the true value, but how consistent is it? What, what's the probability of me being off that much? Can I, how can I quantify that? And this is where the Z test comes in. The Z test is useful when you're comparing some measured value with some theoretical value, or if you happen to actually know the mean value of the entire population. So for example, if you took a sample of SAT scores for a given year, and you wanted to know how close the mean of that sample was to the average for the entire population of everyone who took the SAT that year. Now, that you actually can get. You, you can actually figure out what the average is for the entire everyone who took the test, right? That's a known quantity. This is one of those cases where you actually know the population. And so you could compare your sample result to the population mean using a z-test. Or, like we're doing here, comparing your experimental result to some theoretical value. In order to think about the probability of measuring a given value for our power, we need to think about all the possible abstract uh, values for this power we might have measured. So if we had repeated the experiment an infinite number of times, we would get a distribution of possible values for that power. And that distribution would have a mean, presumably of 0.5, the true value, and some standard deviation. Now, in this lab course, we usually assume that the standard deviation of our data is the same as the standard deviation of the population. So for my dummy data, I measured a standard deviation of 0.23. And we're going to assume that that's representative of the distribution of all the possible values for the power that I might have measured. So we can imagine a population of possible power values that we might measure. And we would maybe guess that these values for power, the power are normally distributed. So, you know, with a mean, they follow kind of a bell curve with a mean of 0.5 and we're assuming that the standard deviation is the same as I've measured from my data. Now, this is an assumption. And if you're doing quote unquote real research, you should think about whether this assumption is going to be valid or not. Now, it's valid a lot, and it's approximately valid even more than that. But you really should check to see if this assumption holds true. But for this lab, let's assume that the so-called normal approximation is valid and we can go with it, okay? So in the sense of all the possible values for P that I might have measured, we can now reframe our question. What is the probability of getting the measurement I got, 0.3 or less? This is what's known as a lower tailed Z-score. We wanna know, What's the probability of getting the 0.3 represented by this blue line on our distribution of all possible theoretical values for the power or less? Okay. 
So this is where the Z test comes in. And the first step is to calculate Z. So what is Z? Z is the number of standard deviations my result is away from the population mean or the true value. How do we represent that mathematically? We do my value minus the population mean or the true value. And then we don't just want to know the distance. We want to know the number of standard deviations away. And so that's why we divide by the standard deviation. So for the dummy data I've been working with throughout this uh, video, you know, I measured 0.3, the true value is 0.5. My measured standard deviation is 0.23, which tells me that my Z is 0 0.870. In fact, it's minus 0 0.870. So that means I'm 0.87 standard deviations below the mean. Again, it means I'm within one standard deviation. Seems pretty likely that this might happen. But again, our goal is to quantify that. So now I know how many standard deviations away I am, but that still doesn't really help me answer the question. To get the answer to how likely is this, we have to go all the way back to the very first lab where we started talking about the normal distribution. And we need to remember that the area under the normal distribution is equal to the probability. If I'm within one standard deviation from the mean to either side, that's a probability of 68%. And we'll remember that this probability doesn't change with the width of the distribution. As the distribution gets wider, it also gets shorter. As it gets narrower, it gets taller. And these things always balance out in such a way that the total area underneath is one and the area within a certain number of standard deviations is always the same. Which means we can frame our question in terms of an area underneath the normal distribution. So we want to know what is the area here underneath our normal distribution of all the possible values for the power between my measured value of 0.3 or less. So what's that area under that curve? Now, this is quite difficult to do, but fortunately, we can do this in a spreadsheet. So here is a sample spreadsheet of uh, results that we can use. So you can see here's the measurement, 0.3, the standard deviation, 0.23, and the correct answer. To measure the Z, we subtract from my value the correct answer, and we see that my value is 0.2 below the correct answer. But again, that's not what we want. We want to know how many standard deviations away that is. So how do I determine that? Well, I divide by the standard deviation. And so now we see that I get a result of minus uh, 0 0.87. So the number we already obtained, I'm 0.87 standard deviations below the true value. Then so far, nothing new. The next step is the answer to the question we've been pursuing. What's the probability? For that, we're going to use the norm dist function. Now, we've been playing a lot with the norm inverse function in our Monte Carlo error propagations and so forth. The norm inverse function says, OK, I've got a bell curve, a normal distribution, and let's pull numbers from that distribution. We've been using RAN, so we've been pulling numbers at random from a bell curve with particular properties. The norm dist function does something a little bit different. So you see it has a couple of different arguments, x, which I'll skip for a second, mean and standard deviation. So when I put in a mean, in our case, the correct answer, and standard deviation, now the spreadsheet has in its head, so to speak, a 
distribution that is centered on 0 0.5 and has the width that I specified, the 0.23. Now I'm interested in uh, this point, the 0.3. So that's what the X is representing. So I'm going to put that in. And then there's one last option. We can see cumulative or not is, is sort of the last option. If I put false, what that will yield is that will yield just, oops, that will yield the height of this distribution at that point. So that'll just give me how tall the distribution is. That's not what I want. I want the area up to and including that point, the cumulative area up to that point. So I am going to set cumulative equal to true. And we see that 19.2, and that's easily enough converted into a you know percentage by just multiplying by 100. I'll put a little percent sign here. So what does this result mean? It means that the probability of being getting a measuring a power of 0.3 or less with a true value of 0.5 is 19.2%, which if we round to 20% means one time in five. So that happens a lot. Right, one time in five, that's more common than rolling a six on a die. Like that happens pretty frequently. So that's it, you know, that matches our expectation. And the you know, the odds of me being off this much or more are on uh, 19.2% to the low end. Now, what if I was off the other way? What if I measured 0.798? What would be the probability of being that far off from the true value or more? This is called an upper tailed Z score. So now we're looking at 0.798 on our distribution of theoretical measured values for the power in our pendulum law. And so we want to know what fraction of the time will I be at this value or higher? So this area here. Now, the norm with the cumulative set to true gives us the gray area. And that's not what we want. We want this area here. Now, the area under the normal distribution by definition is equal to one. So if the total is equal to one and norm gives us the gray, then one minus norm will give us the green area that we want. So how can we maybe do this in a spreadsheet? Well, <clears throat> here I have the hypothetical measured value of 0.98, the same standard deviation. I could measure the Z in the exact same way. I do the power minus the uh, true value. And then to convert it to a number of standard deviations, I divide. The next step is to get the norm dist it's in the same way. So we're going to take this as our measurement of x. There's our mean. There's our standard deviation. And that will yield. And we want to set true. And that yields the gray area. in our picture. But again, that's not what we want. We want the little green area up above. So how do we convert? We do 100 times one minus that, because remember, the total area is one, and then I'm multiplying by 100 just to convert it to a percent. And so 9.8. 7.55%. So 9.75% of the time, 
I should get an answer that is 0.798 or larger. A little bit less common, but still happens pretty often. So nothing, nothing to write home about. Now, there's one last thing that might be of interest is what are the what's the probability of me being off a certain distance in either direction so my data like i said let's go back to the original dummy data which yielded a power of 0.3 now i'm off 0.2 from the true value of 0.5 so i'm consistent because the error bars cover the difference but for all i know i was just unlucky to be below the true value. Maybe if I had measured it again, I would actually get, you know, 0.6 or something. I don't know. So this leads to a different question of what's the probability of me being off 0.2 in either direction? This is called a two-tailed z-score. And we can see why it's called that because Here's the graph with the uh, 0.3. But I now want to know not so much what's the probability of me being less than 0.3. I want to know what's the probability of me being more than 0.2 from the central values. So 0.2. Point two. I want to know what's the probability of me being outside of this window. Well, we can actually use the tools we've already found because this is a low-tailed z-score and an upper-tailed z-score put together, right? The norm dist of the lower uh, z lower-tailed z-score gives us this area, and then the one minus norm dist gives us the z-score of this upper area. And so if I put these two things together, if I add those two areas, that will give me the probability of being more than 0.2 away from the true value. So how might we do this in a spreadsheet? Well, pretty like a pretty much the same thing. So now I want to know what's the probability of me being more than 0.2 from this central value. I would do it in two steps. I would first calculate the lower tail z. So that's 0.3 minus the true value divided by the standard deviation. Uh, the lower tailed probability is going to be Um, dist of 0.3, the mean, the standard deviation, true, right? The upper tailed Z is 0.7 minus the 0.5 divided by the standard deviation. It's 0.787 above, just like this is 0.87 below. Now, the probability here is we want to do the, don't forget the 1 minus, of 0.7, the 0.5, the 0.23, true, because we want the cumulative. And we see that it's symmetric, which is not surprising if we return to our picture, right? The two tails are symmetric. And so the total probability will be 100 times this plus this. The 100, again, just to convert it into a percent. So what's the probability of me being more than 0.2 away from the 0.5 true value? 38.454%. So more than one time in three, because one time in three is 
more than one time in three, I should be at least 0.2 or more away from the true value. Okay, so that's pretty common. So to summarize up, the Z value is the number of standard deviations between your measurement and the true value mu. And it's the number of standard deviations because you've divided by sigma. And this can be converted to a probability using the norm dist function because the Z values um, are thinking about our measurements in the context of a normal distribution of all the possible values we might have measured if we had done the experiment an infinite number of times. And the norm dist returns the lower tail probability. So it, from that value down with everything set as we've been talking about. If I want to get an upper tail, then I need to subtract the norm dist result from one because the area under the bell curve by definition is one. So if I want the upper tail, I take one minus the lower tail. And then to get a two-tailed result, you just add the two tails together. This concludes this video.